Did you know that there were three Chinese startups currently aiming to build and launch their own Starship? Since Starship was unveiled in 2016, and especially since the series of successful tests after 2021, there's been a surge of interest in China for SpaceX's novel architecture. Now, don't get me wrong, while Chinese Starship aspiring projects are real and we'll get into that in a minute, China's primary focus today is still on Falcon 9-like vertical takeoff, vertical landing rocket capabilities. Typically in 2025 alone, Chinese companies are collectively planning to debut no less than eight vertically recoverable rockets manufactured by relatively well-established Chinese commercial companies like iSpace, Landspace, and Galactic Energy. But in the past two years, smaller Chinese startups have entered the scene with a bold claim, quote unquote, Falcon 9 light rockets will not be sufficient to meet future launch demand, nor will they significantly reduce the cost of access to space. And therefore, the only way to achieve these goals is by adopting a Starship-like design. So who are these companies? What do their rockets look like? Who are their founders? And will they have the means to bring their plans to fruition? Let's find out. This video is brought to you by BetterHelp. More on them later. Before diving into these Starship wannabe startups, we need to address the elephant in the room, the Long March 9. This super heavy launch vehicle is currently being developed by China's largest space industry state-owned conglomerate, CASC, and can be considered the OG Chinese Starship. The Long March 9 is a project that has been on the table for over a decade now, since the early 2010s, as China was wrapping up the development of the heavy lift Long March 5, it began exploring its options for even larger rockets to support future, more ambitious missions. The Long March 9 didn't originally follow a Starship architecture. It began as a Hydrolox and solid field design, later evolving into a Carolox field version with strap-on boosters, and in recent years, it has transformed into a reusable single-stick, two-stage, and three-stage methlox field rocket. This latest iteration adopts technical choices similar to Starship, but also with some differences, and I've covered this in a previous episode. We are still a long way from seeing the maiden launch of this rocket, with current plans pointing to a partially reusable version in 2030 and a fully reusable version in 2035. But we know that progress is happening behind the scenes, particularly with the 200 ton thrust full flow stage combustion methlox engine, the YF215, which has begun undergoing various partial hot fire tests. Now, the state conglomerate cask is not the only player with Starship ambitions. Three commercial companies founded in 2023 and 2024 are also pursuing the same goal. These companies are different from the more mature ones often mentioned on the channel, like Landspace or Galactic Energy. These three new companies want to design a Starship from day one, and they are called Astrostone, Cosmoleap, and Nayuta Space. Now, before I get into the details of these new players, I want to thank our paid partner for this video, BetterHelp. I've been experiencing change in my life for a better part of a year now, and many of you may have noticed hints of this on this channel. The locations where I shoot my videos are always changing, and unfortunately my upload frequency hasn't been as high as before, and I apologize for that. Multiple factors, which I'm not going to get into too much detail here, have created a lot of stress, and I'm in a situation where I need to make certain choices. Let's put it that way. And the one thing that's been extremely helpful during this process has been therapy. I've only realized recently how incredibly beneficial therapy can be. For me, it's been an opportunity to speak with someone in total confidence, helping with the process of identifying emotions, breaking down vague feelings into addressable concerns, and ultimately it's been about making more intentional decisions in life. Therapy is something that's quite new to me because it was often unfairly stigmatized in the environment I grew up in, and frankly, I just didn't know where to start. And I think this is where better help can help a lot of people. I've been using their services for a couple of months now, and it's very straightforward to set up. You answer a couple of questions, they match you with a credentialed therapist, and in most cases within 48 hours, you can start communicating through a dedicated chat space and audio and video calls. 
BetterHelp works with a massive network of professionals all around the world, which makes this matchmaking process exceptionally effective, especially if you're looking for someone with a specific background. If you can relate to what I'm saying, I strongly suggest you give it a try. See if it works for you. And don't forget to use our link betterhelp.com slash Hour as it gets you a 10% discount for your first month and naturally it supports the channel. Thank you, BetterHelp, for your paid partnership. And now back to Chinese startups that want to build their own starship. So, Astrostone Cosmoleap Nayuta Space. As mentioned, these starship aspiring companies were founded very recently in 2023 and 2024. Generally, the founders of Chinese space startups are former senior management from Chinese state conglomerates. But increasingly, we are also seeing people from the more established commercial companies quit their jobs to pursue their own entrepreneurial ventures. And here, this is exactly what's happened. The founders of Astrostone and Cosmoleap are both former senior executives from the launch company iSpace. And it's interesting to note that the period when they left iSpace coincided with a difficult time for the company, characterized by multiple launch failures, rumors of a mass exodus of key team members, and a dire need for funding. Now, speaking of funding, at least two of these three Chinese companies are known to have raised significant amounts of money. Nayuta Space secured two rounds of funding in January 2024 and 2025, and each time reportedly raising, quote unquote, tens of millions of yuan. Cosmoleap, on the other hand, raised a whopping 100 million yuan in a seed round in November of 2024. And as for Astrostone, no rounds are publicly known as far as I know, but several Chinese outlets have hinted that an angel round is currently in progress. The three rockets currently being developed by Cosmoleap, Nayuta Space, and Astrostone are called Yuechen-1, Xuanya-1, and Astrostone-1. And they're going for similar approaches, albeit with some small nuances. The rockets have a payload capacity of between 6 and 10 tons, putting them in the medium lift category, far from SpaceX's Starship or Cask's Long March 9. The number of engines also reflects this, with generally nine engines on the first stage and a single vacuum optimized version on the second stage as opposed to the 30 or so on Starship or the Long March 9. And therefore, in this regard, these rockets have similarities with the Falcon 9. But there are also technical choices that clearly draw inspiration from Starship. Typically, all three companies are adopting the chopsticks recovery method using a tower with mechanical arms to catch the rocket during the landing phase. In interviews, all three Chinese founders have emphasized that this approach eliminates the need for the rockets to carry bulky landing legs and their actuation systems, saving up to four tons of payload capacity in the case of a heavy lift rocket. Another core advantage of the chopsticks recovery method is rapid reuse, something deemed impossible with the refurbishment effort required between launches for landing legs. Regarding chopsticks recovery, the most advanced company here seems to be Cosmoleap, which began demonstrations of the catching mechanism with a prototype in November 2024. Interestingly though, it seems like the rocket first stages of these companies would be caught by chopstick style towers at a separate recovery site, as opposed to SpaceX, which has so far recovered its super heavy boosters directly at Starbase. At least two of the three Chinese companies are going for stainless steel as the main material for their rockets, and this choice is driven by the same reasoning as Starship. Traditionally, recoverable rockets like the Falcon 9 perform a re-entry burn after stage separation to slow the rocket stage down to acceptable velocities and aero thermodynamic constraints. But with stainless steel rockets, since stainless steel has a higher melting point than traditional aluminum alloys, rocket stages no longer require a re-entry burn. Instead, they can solely rely on aerodynamic braking, enduring more severe temperatures and velocities, but in exchange saving fuel as a trade-off, therefore increasing the overall payload capacity. And this is even more relevant when rocket's second stages are recovered, as it's the case for Starship, since second stages go through even higher velocities and therefore experience more severe heating. And this brings me to my next point. Although inspired by SpaceX's Starship, 
The initial versions of these three Chinese rockets will only be partially recoverable, with a chopsticks catching maneuver used only for the first stage. This makes their second stage design more conventional compared to Starship, likely because these companies prefer to address these engineering challenges incrementally. However, all three Chinese companies have expressed interest in full rocket reusability as part of their long-term development plans. In a sense, their approach mirrors that of CASC's Long March 9, which is starting out with partial reusability and then progressing to full rocket reusability. Now, how realistic are these plans? Let's cut to the chase. I am skeptical about these new entrants. China has an unbelievably long list of Chinese commercial companies attempting to build their own rockets. As I alluded to at the beginning of this video, some of the first generation commercial rocket companies founded a decade ago have reached a level of maturity where they are about to debut their first reusable rockets. But there's an overall consensus that only a minority of these companies will survive. Some say there's a market to sustain two to three companies, others say five. I don't really know. But the main market for these companies is going to be the deployment of Chinese mega constellations, which are called Xinguang and Qianfan. If all goes as planned, tens of thousands of satellites will need to be launched within the next six years. However, these Starship aspiring companies may be entering the market too late. Cosmoleap, for example, claims that their Yue Chen 1 rocket will perform its maiden launch in 2026, but there's zero chance that this is going to happen. I mean, just look at how much time it's taken older, more experienced Chinese commercial companies to reach the first successful beta launch of their first liquid-filled rockets. And keep in mind that the chopsticks recovery method has to be developed from scratch because this is a completely new development in China. There is no past experience to build upon. I feel that the Long March 9 timeline from Cask seems more plausible for these startups, i.e. launching in the early 2030s. But by the early 2030s, much of the market will likely have been captured by the earlier, more established commercial companies. And by then, these companies would likely have high capacity production facilities, refurbishment centers, launch sites, along with steady launch revenue and well-established relationships with customers. And it's also worth mentioning that some of these more mature companies like Deep Blue Aerospace and Caspace have hinted at plans to gradually evolve their rocket families towards a Starship-like architecture. And so as a result, the rockets from Astrostone, Nayuta Space, and Cosmoleap may not even have a disruptive technological advantage when they enter the market. But hey, nothing is impossible. And on the bright side, these Starship aspiring Chinese companies have secured some funding and they can also take some shortcuts like purchasing off-the-shelf systems, which weren't available previously. And they can also learn a great deal by simply observing SpaceX's trial and error process with Starship. And this is something that their founders are well aware of and actively leveraging. But what do you think about the future of these launch companies? Do you think that there is room for new players in the Chinese launch industry? And do you think that the Starship architecture matters as much as they say? Let me know in the comments below. As always, I want to say a special thank you to my patrons on patreon.com and YouTube memberships for supporting the channel. Your support is awesome and greatly appreciated. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.